alien? Um, what does the alien look like? See, that's the question, isn't it? Yeah, because is it like your stereotypical, like, alien who's got, like, the oval eyes and the head that looks like a guitar pick? Or you're saying that's talking... not hot? I'm, I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just looking for a little clarification here. <laughs> or are we talking one of those, like, those aliens that can take on the form of whatever they want? I feel like that's that's like a cheat answer if if you go if it's only okay if it's a shape shifter because then then you're 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 not really embracing their true form are you you're you're only okay with it if they shift to your desires. Well, again, I'm just I'm just just clarifying here because I mean if it's a shape shifter, then I think that's that's a a resounding yes from pretty much everyone. <laughs> It's when you got that goofy guitar pick headed alien where you're like, eh, I'm going to have to think about this one. What are OK? So what are some what are some qualities in the alien form that maybe aren't traditional in the human form that you might find attractive? Um, I mean, OK, all right, I, <laughs> I got one. Um. I uh, I typically do find females with with uh, like big eyes to be attractive and aliens tend to have big eyes. So I guess that's one thing they have going for them. It sounds like you just want to fuck an anime girl. That's kind of my thing, Mike. Oh, Jesus. Why is it always back to hentai? <laughs> God. Uh, I actually I think what you're talking about is a is a is a pretty common desire, which is, is I think, part of why. Uh, anime women have the big eye. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying that I was I was unique, but I, w I was looking for uh, I was looking for an attractive quality that an alien would possess. Well, it just also it happens to align with the qualities that an anime girl would possess. So there you go. OK, well, there you go. I guess uh, start sending me those six digit codes and uh, I'll let, I'll give you a review. <laughs> The other night on stream, uh, I was playing uh, Final Fantasy with Sean and uh, our friend Sav. And uh, after the stream ended, we were just like sitting there chilling and chatting for a bit. Like it was like a solid like hour and a half after we actually stopped playing the game where we were just we were just talking to chat. And um, we were talking about the difference between uh, ping pong and table table tennis, right? I'm pretty sure they're the same thing, but go ahead. There is a difference. I don't remember what it is uh, off the top of my head, but something about uh, 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 something about the description of of okay, yeah, here it is. Here it is. I, I just looked it up. So it the, specifically now, I, I, I from what I can tell, fundamentally they are exactly the same. Okay, but the word ping pong is a trademark by a company that makes. Like the, the 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 rackets or whatever you call them. Oh, okay, okay, I gotcha. And so the trademark number is a six-digit number, and we looked up <laughs> on stream if it happened to be the number of 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 a hentai, and it sure was. And we talked about it uh, for a bit. <laughs> oh God, that's great, bro. Yeah. So if any if anyone's looking for something, it's uh. Two three three one seven seven. It had a lot of tags. It had a lot of tags attached to it. It had um, it it, it was there was like milf, uh, uh, uh condom, uh, anal, apron was a tag for some reason. Apparently, there's an apron fetish. I guess. Oh damn! Was it like uh, was it like a beefcake in the kitchen type situation? <laughs> if the beefcake refers to a, a a woman's gigantic anime titties, I I suppose. I mean, what what about those uh? What was the hentai category with like chicks with dicks? Futanari. There you go. It could fit into that category. Maybe. Maybe. It, Ma she, she, it, that tag wasn't on there though. Okay. Okay. But anyway, oh, what about the. Do you remember, did you ever see that movie Mars Attacks? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Did it's a solid movie with uh, Jack Nicholson. Would you fuck one of them? Oh, God. I'm trying to think of what they look like. Did they have like uh, they have they the had, really like, the big, big brains? 
Yeah, like the brain head. Did they have like a did they have like a bubble over their head or no? I think they were wearing like space outfits. They had the real big eyes, so <laughs> Um, I'm going to go with no. I think, uh, what? I think that, I think that exposed brain would freak me the fuck out. They got the big eyes though. Yeah. I mean, alien or human, like you're not winning on eyes alone. You, you got to bring something else to the table. I just pointed out one characteristic. I think you're, uh, uh, you're, you're a little too, um, picky, Mike. I mean, maybe. I just have standards, that's all. Standards? More like, um, prejudices. Oh, Lord. What about you? Would you fuck an alien? If it was one of the Mars Attacks aliens, hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Huh. All right, right on. Um, so you talking about the, uh, the ping pong and table tennis, um... The same the same goes for for putt putt and miniature golf. Putt putt is like a brand name of a chain of miniature golf courses. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. So putt putt is. um, Yeah, that's a brand of miniature golf. So now, you know. It's also the name of a 90s edutainment video game series. Putt putt, putt putt. Yep, putt putt goes to the moon. Putt putt goes to the zoo. Very popular <laughs> games. Okay. okay, actually, I'm glad. Uh, I mean, I know, I know, we'd talk about uh, about games at some point today because I mean, we do that every week. But I recently heard about a game, and I was curious to get your take. What uh, What do you think about something called Poppy Playtime? The fuck is that? Apparently it's some sort of like, like horror video game, but it's like child themed. I haven't heard of that. That's, that's not an uncommon approach though. Baldi's, Baldi's something. That was a, a one recent, what the fuck was that called? Baldi's, Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning. It's a horror game. Okay. Yeah, I think this has got like a character called like Hugsy Wugsy or something. And... He's got he looks like a, you know, like a like a Sesame Street character or whatever, but he's got like sharp teeth and chases you and kills you. And apparently like kids have been like <laughs> getting tricked into watching these videos on like YouTube and stuff. <laughs> yeah, so apparently they got some backlash over it, but they're like, eh, fuck it. I mean, that's kind of like one of those Deadpool situations. Like if you as a parent take your or let your child play that game without, you know, doing the research to find out that maybe it's maybe it's not super cool. Like that's kind of on you, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean for sure to a degree. Yeah. But But uh, I, but like the 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 sort of semi childlike Avenue is a pretty common one, all things considered. If you you've heard of Friday, you probably haven't actually because you're a fucking boomer. You've, have you heard of uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? Yeah. Oh, you have heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like the the guy who made those games, a guy named Scott Cawthorn, uh, he was a game designer and he made like uh kind of childish games, but he kept getting like the same kind of comments that like all the animatronics in his games looked much scarier th rather than cute. <laughs> okay. So he was like, all right, fuck it. I'll turn it into a horror series. And it, it exploded in popularity. So that, that worked out pretty well for him. Nice. That's yeah. cool. Huh? Um, what's going on with you? What's, what's new? What's, what's going on in your world? Nothing. I, I spend all day working on my video. Well, how did that go? Great. Nice. No spoilers. It's good. 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 Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, man. Damn. I, um, I, uh, I ran into one of our old coworkers the other day. Who that? Um, I, I didn't, I didn't say anything to her, but, uh, I ran into our girl Eunice. 
Eunice. Hey. Yeah, apparently she's working at at a grocery store. That's one of my accounts now. What an absolute G. I I thought I saw her like uh, like picking items for like a web order. And I was like, oh, if that's her, I don't want to end up in a conversation. <laughs> nice. <laughs> very sweet lady. But I just didn't want to have that conversation. Um, and then I was I was back there like a week later and I was like, oh, yep, that that's for sure. That's 100 percent units. <sighs> but I'm sure at some point I'm going to end up running into her and having like a half hour conversation about nonsense. But yeah, I'll avoid she, it as long as possible. She could go on. Yeah. Did uh did we ever tell the story about Eunice and your scarf? No. <laughs> we should. That's a good one. You want to tell that? I mean, you were there for it. I I have only heard about it. Okay. Okay. I couldn't remember if you were there or not. Um obviously you were in the building cuz your scarf was there, but um so like I just said, we had this coworker Eunice and she's Eunice is a very nice lady. Um but she is a very um, conservative. How do I want to? Pr- yeah, a very kind of woman. C- conservative Christian, wholesome type, older lady. Wholesome for probably. the most part, but, but wholesome for the most part, but would occasionally say things that are pretty questionable. Well, yeah, I mean those same questionable things that a lot of conservative Christians will say. That was uh, that was her wheelhouse. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, she's to paint a picture. She's probably in her sixties. Um, but yeah, again, nice lady, really hard worker. And, uh, one day I was, I was, uh, in our stock room, there was somebody else else with me. I don't remember who it was, but, uh, Mac had his, his coat and scarf hanging up on, uh, the little, little coat rack thing we had. And, the scarf that Mac had, if I remember correctly, it was black with gray sc- skulls or gray with black skulls. It, it was black like and white. It was it was just a black and white scarf. It had skulls on it. And like on the other side, it would reverse colors where the skulls were black and the background was white. OK, OK. So I, I remembered it fairly, fairly correctly. Um, but uh, I was standing there and she was asking me something and she noticed your scarf, but she couldn't tell what was on it. So she like grabbed it and was like, oh, and like unfolded it to see the design. And when she saw that it was it was skulls, she literally like dropped it like she was holding on to something like evil, like, yeah, evil. And she goes, uh, ick. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Eunice. God. I love her, but that was so ridiculous. Come on. There are skulls on a scarf, lady. They're not going to hurt you. I like that scarf. I still I still wear it. I, there was nothing wrong with the scarf. It was just it's nice Eunice. Scarf. Ick. Oh, man. Yeah. So I saw Eunice. Um, and I saw my boy Gary again. Gary, Did he uh, have anything to say? The guy that hands out samples and talks to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the one who wants to call you Michael. Yes, yes, that's the one. So it was weird. So I, um, I saw him like, uh, I didn't bring this up last week because it, it wasn't really anything eventful, but I like, I saw him the next week and, uh, he was like, oh, hey, Michael. And I was like, hey, how's it going? And he was like, uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I, I I know you're busy. And I was like, OK. And so I like start walking away and he starts talking to me. And I just kept walking. So he uh, did start taking up your time. Yes, he did. And then the real crazy thing was like two days later, I was in another one of my accounts and he was in there just doing his shopping. And he was like, Michael, how's it going? And I was like, what? And I was he's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I I mean, I don't work where you work. I go other places. What like, what are you doing here, bro? It was just weird. 
Huh. I'm seeing that guy everywhere. He just wants to be friends with you, Mike. He does. He does. Maybe you should be more respectful of that. Think about that. I, I, I think I am. I converse with him. Have you invited him out? <laughs> I have not. Why not? I don't know. Um, maybe we'll work up to that. I don't know if we're at that level yet. Well, he seems like he could use a friend. That's all I'm saying. Maybe, maybe when I see him next time, I'll be like, hey, Gary, is it cool if I call you Gare? And then can I call you Gare Bear? Sa- <laughs> Ga- can I call you Gare Bear? And if he says yes, then I'll be like, all right, we're going to bro down. Let's let's hang out. Sounds we'll like see what happens. Right. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Oh, yeah. You've been having decent weather out by you. Yeah, it's just, it's been it's been pretty rainy mostly. Been yeah, a bit we've chill. Uh, yeah we've been having some rain, but uh, we've been having some nice days the last couple of days, especially today. Like the sun's been out all day. I think it might have. I don't know if it actually hit seventy. It was definitely like sixty eight at some point. So it was nice today. Sun was out. Beautiful. Good. Yeah. And then I think like Tuesday or Wednesday, it's going to be a high of like 42. With possible snow. That ain't great. No, no. But uh, I am enjoying. I know it's God. I don't know when we changed them, maybe like a month ago, whatever, whenever we switched the clocks. But. uh, I'm uh, I'm really enjoying this extra daylight. Since since we've had sun today for the first time in like six months, I actually have my uh, my blinds open to uh, let some of that sunlight in. Uh, it's great. We uh, we haven't had sunlight when when we've recorded a podcast remotely in a really long time. That's depressing. <laughs> yeah, it's like because we started doing this remote when it would get dark at like five o'clock and that kind of sucked but this is cool it's like daytime again i'm not like all fucking sleepy this is great yeah um that's great i'm I'm happy for you thank you thank you um, oh are you going to do you doing your grocery shopping after this yep nice nice gotta stop my by my tobacco <sighs> shop too Oh, oh, uh, to get your tobacco and kitty litter for Luna. Yeah. Oh, nice. Still, still going to the, the tobacco pet store. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a good store. It just has that one weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess I just wasn't sure if you happened to check out any, any place else around there. No, I like that store. It's, it's small. There's like a few enough em, number of employees that I can like recognize them which is kind of cool nice yeah that's cool i like having little stores like that that you you go in frequently but don't have like an insane amount of employees to the point where they know you enough that they like recognize you but don't necessarily want to have a full-on conversation with you exactly that's 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 like the yeah, that's like the the perfect medium. I'd agree. Yeah. Like, you know, you walk in, you get like a smile and a like, oh, hey, and maybe like, well, cool. See you next time. That's awesome. That's great, because generally they know that, you know, what you're looking for and they don't need to bug you and they don't want to have a long form conversation. It's great. That's perfect. Yeah, the less I have to know somebody, the better I, uh, uh, the better off I feel. Yeah, it depends. Um, I have sort of a situation like that. Um, I mean, granted, most of my accounts, I I know the people reasonably well. Um, but uh, one of mine that I go and you know they've got a greeter there and. 
this lady, she sees me almost every day. It's, she's almost always the greeter in the morning when I go in. And I'm there at least two, if not three days a week. And so she always says hi to me. And she's not always looking at me. And sometimes I try and, like, play a little game where I can, if, like, can I sneak in and get past her without her saying hi to me? It's like a little game. <laughs> but, damn, that lady's fucking on it. Like, I'll try and, like, sneak through, and I'll be, like, 15 feet past her, and she'll be like, hello, how are you? And I'll be like, I'll turn around, and I'll wave, and I'll be like, hi. And then she always tells me to have a good one when I leave. But today, today was different. I, oh. I decided, I decided I'm going to beat her to the punch. I'll and I alpha said, of this relationship. I said hello to her before she could say hello to me. And I also, on my way out, beat her to the have a nice day. God, damn. I felt gr- I felt great. You should. Uh, you should feel really good about that. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime you can feel superior to an older woman is a good time, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Man, you know what? Society in general is full of a bunch of trash. You know that? Yeah, most of them living in Ohio. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, okay, this actually happened. I thought of this because it happened right before I saw that lady and said hello to her. I was walking in and I'm, uh, I'm in the parking lot and there's like a stray shopping cart that's like kind of like rolling into the middle of the aisle. And there's like me and like a guy like 10 feet behind me. And I didn't need a shopping cart. I mean, I wasn't buying groceries. So. I'm like, well, this cart's in the middle of the aisle, like whatever. So I just I walked over, I grabbed it and I took it over to the cart corral. Literally, I had two people, that guy and like somebody else in his vehicle with his window down, like. Thank me for returning that cart. And I was like, oh, I mean, like, yeah, no problem. But like, I don't know. I was just trying to not be a piece of shit. Like, yeah, but that's a surprisingly uncommon thing. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently it is. Oh, people are the worst. I just, I like, I, I feel so much frustration when I'm at a a store and I see someone not put away a, a cart. It's just, it's, it's, it's such a lack of respect for other people's time. It's like you, you are, when you decide not to put a cart away, you're actively deciding that your time is more important than somebody else's and your time is never more important than somebody else's. No, no, not at all. No, so it's just, it's just, it's completely, there's no, there's no good reason for it at any situation. No, you, I mean, you'd have to have some sort of like extreme emergency. Like there's a life or death situation. I got to go. I don't have time for a shopping cart. Fine. I don't know, man. Even if my wife was about to give birth, I, I would put that f- fucker away. <laughs> right. Well, you don't like kids, so I mean, that is accurate. Any uh, any extra time you can spend away from a child, you're even if it's that that twenty seconds to put that card away, you're gonna take it. <laughs> I gotta savor the remainder of my of my childless life here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Because once that skin puppy comes, they're <laughs> they're sticking around. I don't like that. You don't like that? I don't like that. I love skin puppy. I think that's hilarious. Stop saying it's it. The, it's the inverse of uh, uh, fur baby. Fur baby's fine. Yeah, it's fine. But if uh, if they're if they're fur babies, then. And I have I only have a fur baby, then I'm going to refer to your child as a skin puppy. Don't like that. OK, well, all right. You don't have any skin puppies, so you don't have to worry about it. And I never will. What about a skin kitty? No, no, that's even worse. <laughs> all right. All right. I just figured I'd try. I swear we've talked about this before. 
We probably have. There's so many fucking episodes of this podcast. Yeah, I know. I was trying to like, I thought of something that was in that we had talked about at some point. And the best I could do was pinpoint it to like a three month period of time. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to listen to try to find that. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Oh, shit. It's time for our uh, LaCroix review of the week. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Breaking news. Uh Oh, what do you got? Gilbert Godfrey died. I did see that. I saw he was what? 67. I think. Says so. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. What uh, did it say? What he died of? I didn't I didn't read the article. Um, something about a long illness. I don't think it shared what illness. No. Recurrent huh. ventricular tachycardia due to my my myotonic myotonic dystrophy type two, whatever the fuck that is. So something with his heart. Yeah. Okay. Fuck that sucks. Yeah. A legend. That, yeah. He was the uh, he was the voice of the parrot in Aladdin. Yeah, he was. Damn. Um. Mike, have you ever heard a website called uh, uh, Cameo? Uh, yeah, isn't that the one where you can like pay celebrities to like record a message for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. a bunch of there's a bunch of celebrities on that, and like they're uh, they're whatever they people they'll do like really half assed performances for people, um, or or like they'll be really selective in what kind of videos that they'll record. Um, Gilbert Godfrey is hilarious because like. People would send him the craziest shit, and no matter what it was, he would say it. <laughs> there's oh, like, that's great. There's like a a, a a video online of him like doing doing the voice of the parrot from Aladdin, and he's saying like, "Suck my parrot dick, fucker." <laughs> he was also um the uh, the Aflac dog. Was he? I didn't know that one. He was, and then he, there was some sort of controversy with him a few years ago, and they fired him and got a replacement. But yes, at one point, he was the voice of the Affleck duck. Affleck. I don't think you oh. would, I don't think you would know this show, but he was also, he also played a bird in, in a show called Cyber Chase. I don't know the show, but that's kind of funny. Yeah, it it's is funny, funny that he, he played another bird, but Cyber Chase was like, Everybody, it was, it says it came out in 2002. So everyone around my age, like saw that show and knew it and like knew him as the voice of that character. Okay. Right on. Nice. Uh, but that sucks. R- R.I.P. Gilbert. We'll miss you. A real OG an original Gilbert. <laughs> Shut up. Or original Godfrey. I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. <sighs> Sad day. Do we need a moment of silence? I think your uh, your bad joke created one for myself. So we're all good. Okay. That, that works for me then. <sighs> um, all right. LaCroix review of the week. Today. Bum, bum, ba, da. Oh, I don't know what that was. Apparently that's, that's our new LaCroix theme music. We'll, we- we'll work on it. Um, we have, we probably won't work on it. Just, just to be clear, we probably won't work on it, but that's okay. Oh yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm not working on that. I'm just going to keep doing that every week. Um, (laughs) no, this is from the LaCroix curate series. This is the, uh, I'm probably murdering this, uh, this name, but it's Muir Pepino. It's, uh, it's blackberry cucumber. And, uh, that was pretty good. It's, it's legit. A um, little light on the blackberry, but very refreshing with the cucumber. Gets uh, Give it a seven. Solid seven. GG. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, what, uh, what video games are you working on playing now? Um, right now, I'm still in the middle of Elden Ring. Although I haven't uh, uh, played it in a few days. Um, I got to a point 
with that with with uh with Elden Ring where I like to, to put this into context like in in the week that I've I had played it right like it, it I had started playing it like one Saturday and then like by the following Saturday between all of my streams on the game I had I had sunk about 30 hours into it already wow okay yeah so I was getting to a point where I was starting to feel a little burnt out on it. Like I, I, I was, I was playing the game and I, and you know, re reminder, these are really hard games. I was getting to a point where I was starting to get really frustrated in like parts of the game that I really shouldn't have been frustrated by. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop playing this for a bit. Uh, and just cause I don't want to be burnt down on it. I want to, you know, enjoy the game that I waited so long to play. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, uh, so I, I kind of, I, I, I've stepped away from that. So I haven't, I haven't played it since last Sunday and I'm planning to play it again tomorrow. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Nice. Nice. What, uh, what time are you, uh, what time are you going to stream that tomorrow? Like when I get home from work around like two thirty, three o'clock. Okay. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll try and, uh, I'll try and tune in, but, uh, our homegirl crystal is going to be in town tomorrow. So, um, Make her a few watch. of us are going to grab, uh, grab some dinner. So I don't, I don't know if I'll have time, but maybe, uh, maybe I'll, I'll check in when, uh, when we're out to dinner and crystal can say hi to you. Sounds good. Sounds like a or plan. Or you can say hi to her. Either way. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the plan there. But uh, since then, um, Sean is back from school. He finished up his last semester, and all he has left to graduate is do his um, thesis. So he's had a lot more free time than usual. So he picked up Final Fantasy XIV. I've been playing that with him. Um, nice. Final Fantasy 14 is an MMO. And I, 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 it's, it's like World of Warcraft, if you don't know about video games. Um, Okay. Uh, and uh, I, I played that a lot back last summer, but I haven't really touched it since then. So um, I've been playing that with him, which was which has been fun. Okay. Nice. Nice. That's it. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'm just uh, working on the video. So you know. Nice. Right on. Right on. Right on. Right on. Um. That's cool. Um. Crap. Well, oh, ooh, ooh. I, ha I have an update on uh, a previous podcast topic. Um, this was a while back. I don't remember. Maybe months, weeks. Who knows? But years. we, we <laughs> years, who knows? At some point, we talked about um, uh, the, that situation with that lady who complained to me about not having the uh the lower uh coat hook in the the bathroom yeah yeah <laughs> this was this wasn't long after we recorded that episode um uh our boy ken's wife amy sends me a text and she was like hey i just wanted to let you know that um i was just at the lady doctor and they didn't have a lower coat hook either yo that's fucked up yeah, right. Like, I feel like that, if anything, is a place where you probably should have one. Women do be kind of short. Sometimes. I mean, I have no room to talk. I'm pretty damn short myself. Just a little boy doing what little boys do. <laughs> yes. I, I guess if if I want you to call me a, a little boy, then. Bro, do you remember science fairs as a kid? Those were fun. They were pretty lit. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know why we I don't know why we didn't do shit like that for other subjects, but science fairs were actually pretty cool. Yeah. Um when I was a kid, my dad and I did a science fair project about levers and fulcrums. Nice. And Ever since that, I've understood the science of of levers quite well. Nice. Um, 
Can you can you think of any other? Uh... No, I only ever did one science fair. Oh, OK. I did. I did two. Um, one time I did like the very classic, uh, volcano. Okay. Where you make the volcano and you put like the baking soda and vinegar and like red food coloring and make it erupt. Yep. Um, I did that. That was pretty sweet. And, um, God, I don't know how I remember this, but it was, um, it was called a self-propelled can and you took um, it was like an empty coffee can and you like poked a hole in the top and the bottom and extended a rubber band from end to end and secured it. And I think you put like weights in the middle of the rubber band and you rolled it across the floor and Something about like, I don't even remember how it worked, but you'd give it like a little nudge and it would like roll all the way across the room or maybe like when it stopped, it would roll back to you or something. Something about like the rubber band and the the way like the the weights would like. The uh, whatever inertia of the the weight inside of it would like keep it going, but that was pretty cool. Nice. I don't think I ever actually won anything other than like, congratulations, you completed the science fair. But, you know, still pretty cool. You ever think about how schools kind of went out of their way to make science seem really cool and fun? And then they went back on that and were like, hey, science is fucking lame. (laughs) Yeah, kind of. Like, you know, when you're a kid, like science is fucking awesome. Like you're, you're building bot- uh, like bottle rockets. You're doing like, uh, 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 like build, like, I don't know, like building shit to uh, like, like building like toothpick bridges and shit like that or, or whatever. Uh, right. uh, you know, and, and then you get into like high school and, and, and all of a sudden it's like, Hey, the physics have fun with that asshole. It's basically another math class. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. Um, I mean, I never took physics myself, but um, yeah, you're right. Really, the only thing that like kept anyone entertained in science, like beyond. Yeah, like you said, like the basic stuff when we were in elementary school is like anyone who was into like dissecting things. But, oh my god, that was fuck. I told I I, I already told the story of my like an, anatomy class from hell. Like I fucking hated that shit. I hated dissecting shit. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, like I thought it was gonna be cool. You know, like we did it the first time. I think I was in like I don't know, maybe like seventh or eighth grade. Um, we thought it'd be pretty cool, and. Uh, yeah, then you learn that that stuff that's been like sitting in like formaldehyde smells fucking, fucking terrible. disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, like to the point where you want to gag and you're like anything that was going to be interesting about this is no longer interesting. So <laughs> This is now lame to me. <laughs> yeah. Get this out of my face. Yeah. Yeah, like the 12-year-old in me that was like I mean, I could see cutting a frog open being kind of cool. Any any cool factor was instantly gone, and now I think it's just gross. So yeah, yeah, they kind of killed that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I never thought about how like they used to make science super fun. Yeah, yeah. That was like the it was like the best. I loved like the science class when I was a kid, and then I got in high school, and I was like, I'm gonna take chemistry. Chemistry's pretty easy. Yeah. And I mean, even with that, like they didn't even do like cool chemistry. Like, you know, when you're you when you're a kid, it's like, oh, chemistry's like blowing shit up. Let's go. And and then you get into high school and it's like, okay, here's how, here's how you do formulas to figure out mole weights and like how <laughs> it's like, I don't fucking care. Right. Right. Or like, here you go. Mer- or uh, memorize the periodic table because you're going to need that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, same deal. It's like, oh, chemistry sounds really cool on paper, but then you you start getting to the paperwork, and it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. And then you've got like, then you've got like your actual math classes that are like, okay, we're gonna try to make this fun. Let's turn it into a story problem. Oh, fuck that. And it's like, no, no. All you did was just make it harder and less fun because now yeah, I have you, to pay attention to words instead of just numbers. Yeah, you make like you make it extra confusing. Right, like you're trying to trick me by like omitting a word that changes the entire like verbiage. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Fucking schools. How many how many episodes have we ragged on schools? Probably a lot. This is what like 63, 64 maybe? 64. 64. Ah, like the Nintendo 64 classic um yeah i mean we've probably ragged on schools a solid like 15 to 20 episodes i gotta say right that sounds about right yeah but yeah you know what like 20 to 30 percent of the of the episodes maybe pretty good sounds about sounds about right and to to be fair teacher teachers do a for the most part, a very good job. I mean, it definitely depends on the teacher, but like they oh, aren't, I mean, they there aren't are, set up like there's obviously bad teachers, but teachers deserve a ton of credit. You, well, oh, absolutely. Because they are not paid enough for doing one of the, like the most noble professions there is. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Anybody who argues <sighs> that teachers don't, shouldn't get paid more is a fucking idiot. Right. Right. No, teachers absolutely need to get paid more. That's like a no brainer. Like they make like fucking like retail salary. Yeah. Trying a lot to, of times like, they have to like dip into their own money to like pay for classroom supplies and shit like that's messed up. Yeah. While trying to like educate our entire country. Yeah. Trying to educate the next generation here. Trying to make it interesting <laughs> and fun. Yeah. And I seriously. Have to pay for it myself. Like that's fucked up. Yeah. And like paying for shit for your classroom would be one thing if you were making like, you know, a very substantial income and it wasn't, you know, really affecting you. But yeah, when you're not making a lot and you have to pay for your own stuff out of your pocket, that sucks. It blows. Especially for something that you have to go to school for. A lot of school for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh sucks. It's the, like with with like teacher certifications and like recertifications, it's like it's so many years of school. It really is. You have to really enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. You have to really enjoy what you're doing or you have to be that that piece of trash teacher probably in ohio that literally only has that job because they want to have the summer off and they just like they get tenure and then they just mail it in for like the next 20 years yeah but i I mean but you have those people at every job so it's not oh yeah that's not exclusive to teachers but um yeah you have those people everywhere but for the most part yeah, those teachers are very dedicated. I didn't realize we were just going to praise teachers today, but good for us. We can shit good talk for- school, but like because it's a very poorly designed system that is in desperate need of revision. But the teachers. You know, that's that's one hell of a job. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. And yeah, we're lucky no, that I- there are people who are willing to give in how shitty it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Out, you don't there aren't shout out a to lot the of out there. Well, maybe there maybe there's more more than I think of cuz well, I mean, we've talked about how like shitty companies are and like just shitting on like retail employees who are just 
trying to do a good job, but the company doesn't let them. Yeah. It happens, but not to the same level, level where teachers get screwed over. No. <sighs> yeah. When, when, you're, when you're pumping gas, well, actually... I don't pump gas anymore. I was just going to say, yeah, you don't pump gas anymore. How's that working out? I, I'm used to it. I mean, did you ever get the whole like tipping, no tipping situation figured out? Yeah, you don't have to. I mean, well, I mean, technically you don't have to tip anybody. It's not expected. Okay, it's not expected. Gotcha. All right, right on. Um, okay, yeah, I just I wasn't sure because I know when you move there, you're like, "Ah, I don't know. I just keep giving them money because I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. Um. So I, uh, if I'm filling my tank, I, uh, you know, I just, I leave like the little, the little lever attached so that it, it keeps pumping and I don't have to hold it, you know? Sure. Um, so the other day I was at, I was at Costco and I was like five miles to E and I was at the cheapest gas station in town. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to fill it up. Um, so I just let it go and I don't think this has ever happened. I just let it go and let it stop on its own. It landed on $60 to the penny without me stopping it. I got a perfect pump, bro. That's what she said. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That, in fact, is what she said. But, yeah, it kind of blew my mind. Like, I kind of like... That's what she said. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, we're going with that. I like it. You just just keep throwing me good ones. That's what she said. Um, Yeah, we haven't whipped out one of those in a while. Um, Yeah, no, solid, solid joke. Glad you glad you got to incorporate that twice. Um, but I don't think I've ever had that but ha- had that happen to me before. Just naturally. I don't think I have either. I don't think that's real. I'm pretty sure you're making it up. I mean, it's like a it's like a fairy tale situation. Like Pixar didn't happen, bro. <laughs> OK, OK. All right. Don't believe me. You know what else is pretty unbelievable? Joe Mama. <laughs> so I had. <laughs> I had this goofy situation. Uh, This was the end of last week. And it was so weird that I couldn't remember for like a couple minutes if it had happened to me before or if it was just a weird like deja vu feeling. Two days in a row in the exact same location at a stoplight, I was behind the same pickup truck because it had a personalized license plate. And two days in a row, I was trying to figure out what it said and I couldn't figure it out. Like the first day I was like, what, what is that? What does that say? And then like the light turned green and I had to turn And the next day I was literally behind it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, I love trying to figure out what they, what they say. And I'm like, I can't figure that out. And I'm like, wait, I've, I've seen that before. Oh, wait, it was at this exact same stoplight yesterday when I was coming home from work. It was super weird. It was, it was the weirdest part was that I, you know, I don't get out of work at the same time every day. Right. And but the other weird thing is that I let's see if you can if you can try and figure out what this license plate said. It um it was B R W R P W R. Hang on, I'm gonna have to type that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know it, it, it's hard to, to visualize. B R W R P W R. 
Mike, that might have just been a random license plate. I don't know. No, no, man. Nah, that's not random. At first, I thought. <laughs> at first, I thought it said Brown Power. But then there's that other R in there. So then I'm like, Brower Power? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really matter what it says, but I don't think I've ever seen that happen to me. Like, like that close to being, you know, back to back. I've seen the same license plate before if it's something real goofy, but nothing random like that. How do you feel about personalized license plate? Uh, I mean, I would never get one, but good on you if you do, I guess. Seems like kind of um, a waste of money. I mean, yeah, I mean, it kind of is it. I mean, it's not really that much money, but um, yeah, it's even it's so not- like you, you're already paying just to have a license plate. Why pay extra? Eh, I mean, I don't know if I would ever get one, but I don't. If I if there was something cool enough that I I wanted, I would do it. I wouldn't hesitate. I just. Yeah. I don't know. I think they're kind of cool. Like when people get really clever with them, I like it. I think that's why I like to try to figure them out. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I kind of feel like it's like a, a, ca- a car person thing. Like my 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 younger brother might get something like that because he's like a real car person. I wouldn't because my car is a piece of shit and I don't really care about it. Yeah, I mean... I feel no pride in driving a a, a, two, a 1999 Toyota Avalon. I gotcha. I mean, if you had a license plate that said Captain Mac, that would be pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. I would not want to have that because I don't want people to know where I am at any given time. I don't want people to, like, find my car. I mean, I get that, but you have a reasonably recognizable car at this point. Yes, but I also have a very small online following. If it gets True. larger, I'm going to, you know, possibly be able to afford a nicer car or at least a, a different car. Right. And I will because that's like my next big saving project. Yeah. So you don't want to be recognized somewhere. I'm not against being recognized, but I don't want people knowing like my car, the, the, what car I drive, because then, you know, if they like see it in my in my driveway, then they can find me. And I don't like, I don't want people knowing where I fucking live, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Um, by the way, Lily's getting a drink and I can definitely see it's picking it up on the mic, but I don't know if you're actually going to be able to hear it or not. I can hear it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's not super, super loud, but it, uh, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it it's there. Um, our uh, our boy Ken had a theory about people with personalized license plates, and uh, this this actually sticks with me because it's it's pretty damn accurate. Because almost all the time, almost every time I see one now, I uh, I try to look at look at the driver. But Ken pointed out that most people that have personalized license plates are smokers. <laughs> There's like a correlation. Really? And I started paying attention. And I don't know if it's just because I'm looking for it. Who knows? Maybe maybe it's not any more than anybody else. But once he brought that up, I started looking for it. And I swear to God, it's like 75% of people with a personalized license plate are actively smoking a cigarette when you pass them. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like a thing. Huh. But I don't know. I think more research might need to be done. I don't know if it's conclusive. Let's get the scientists on that one. Yeah. What kind of scientists do you think that would take? Um, what was the other kind of scientist we were discussing a long time ago? 
tooth scientist. Yeah, we'll get the tooth scientist guy out of it. He can't be too busy. Yeah, there's not that much tooth science you need to be exploring. Like, I mean, teeth science is pretty figured out at this point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We've been working on this for like a couple hundred years, working on getting our teeth figured out. I think we're at a pretty good spot. Yeah. I mean, we do still have that thing that we need to figure out how to like keep your teeth clean, white and cavity free without having to scrub them like a caveman. But (laughs) I mean, I mean, other than that, we're doing a decent job with it. I'd agree. Yeah. Does it seem weird to you on this topic that. Also, where we've advanced in science and medicine that dentures are still in existence. I mean, if we haven't figured out how to not need to brush our teeth, then we definitely haven't figured out how to make sure the deep teeth don't fall out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I get that. I guess I'm thinking more of like a better solution for when teeth do fall out rather than like this forms to your, to the roof of your mouth and you glue it in place. Like that seems like such like a primitive like solution. I feel like maybe other options have come up, but it's like too pricey for people to afford. Yeah. I mean, I know you can, you can definitely get like, like a dental implant where they like, put like a screw where like into your jaw where the tooth was. And then they put like, like a permanently affixed tooth over it. And it just stays in place all the time. But I think those are like a good, like, like three grand a tooth. So if you had a whole mouth to do, you're looking at like, I don't know, a lot of money. I I don't know how many teeth you have. So, you're looking at at least like 50 grand. I'm not doing the math right now. So that's uh that that's pretty pricey. Yeah. So maybe that's, maybe that's the issue, but yeah, I mean, just, just gluing, gluing artificial teeth into your mouth every morning and then taking them off at night. Doesn't seem like a, like a super viable option. Would you, would you ever get grills? Like, like, like the snap on kind. Just any like with, kind. Would you get the ones that like you, you glue to your mouth permanently or. <laughs> I mean, are we taught? Am I myself in my current life or am I like, like someone famous? I'm confused by your question. Well, no, I wouldn't do it now, but if I was like famous and I wanted to make a headline or get some attention, maybe I'd maybe I'd throw a grill on and, you know, slyly let the uh, let the paparazzi spot me out somewhere and get myself in the news. You you have an interesting means by which you decide things like this. I mean, that's like that's like the marketer in me, like that's just how you market yourself. You, uh, I mean, any publicity is good publicity. So the more people hear your name, the more people know who you are. I feel like with like the evolution of like cancel culture, the all publicity is good publicity thing has kind of died. I mean, there there are people who have had their entire careers just removed by some thing, even big or small. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, when was the last time you heard about Kevin Spacey? Yeah, for sure. Um, For good reason. Yeah, no, no, for sure. For good reason. And I guess, yeah, you're right. It it doesn't hold true like it necessarily used to, but it's still pretty true. It's still true to some extent, but like. It's like at this point, it's like most publicity is good publicity. Yeah, that that that'd be a better way of putting it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess in reality, that was probably always the way it should have been. It's not like there was ever a time where like, hey, guess what? I murdered someone. That's going to be good for me. That's going to be big. (laughs) (laughs) I think this is going to be my big break. This is my year. 
Um, yeah, but uh, who knows? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Publicity, you know, right? Would you get a grill? That's the question. Where? What? What? What's your thoughts on that? Only if it was like dope as shit, you know. Like I would get a, I would get a grill. Like you know how they do like the diamond grills. Yeah. I would do that, but all the diamonds would have to look like a Minecraft diamond, and uh, across my teeth, it would have to, it would have to say like, "I play Minecraft every day" or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> like Minecraft for life. Yeah. Is- nice. That's what I'd do. That'd be my grill. Someone photoshopped like, me with that. Yeah, I think you should get like your upper row just says Minecraft, and then the bottom row it's got like the number four and then like L Y F E. I like it. Yeah. That's cool. And then like, maybe you could do the thing (laughs) where on like the inside of your bottom lip, you get like, you get a tattoo of something Minecraft related. And when people are like, what what what's your grill say? You're like Minecraft for life. They're like, oh, you really like it. Then you just grab that bottom lip and pull it down, and they see like, I'd be like, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, is there like a main character from Minecraft? I've I've never like played it. The player character is named Steve. Well, you got to get a fucking Steve on the inside of that lip. Yeah, like Steve Steve for life. I'll get like the like the like, you know, the tattoos that like boyfriends and girlfriends get that they end up regretting later, but it'll be for me and Steve. Nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, I like that. Yeah. You know what else I like? What? The end of the podcast. Me too. Later, bitches. Later, bitches.